Thank you for your love and grace. It's because you gave yourself up for us, we can give our lives to serve others. Thank you for the inspiration, the motivation that we see in you. We give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. And the saints say, glory. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. How many people know that Christ-centered living is the best way to live your life? Yeah, yeah. It's such a privilege to know these things. Just lift up your hands where you and give God praise. Give God praise. Thank Him. Just thank Him. Thank Him for the truth of the gospel you know. Thank Him for the light that you have. You know, you have to be thankful for these things. Thank God for the saints and what they know. Paul said, I do not cease to give thanks. My eyes see. Thank God for the manifestation of His Spirit through you. You laid hands on someone and they healed. You know the things to come. You give one a word of wisdom. It's not normal. It's actually supernatural. You preach the gospel and men hear the truth. Supernatural stuff. The power of God through your mouth. Your life has meaning. Your life has got a purpose. Give him thanks. Glory to God. Amen. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. And the saints say, please let us be seated. Let's be seated. Glory to God. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. See, as I go into God's word, I will be edified. I receive clarity. All right. I receive instruction revelation in your word in the name of our lord jesus come on shout amen yeah you, you have to be intentional with this thing say i receive clarity yeah hallelujah 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 amen and amen and amen you know if we go home now the truth is brother brother victory has preached the message of today hallelujah praise god Hallelujah, praise God. If we go home now, because we, today we are, we're actually teaching on, you know, because we're looking at how to, being led by the Spirit, and we're looking, we're actually looking at the place of concentrating your life to God's plan. And that's what he sang about. Because you see, okay, we're only teaching being led by the Spirit part two. Glory to God. You know, and you see, when we say we are holy, it means we have been set apart unto God. Set apart unto God for what? In working in God's plan and God's purpose. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. You know, for example, there are cups. In Israel in those days, there are cups that everybody can use. Right? And there are cups that were put in the holy place. How many people know what the holy place is? Inside the temple what do they call those cups holy cups amen amen does anybody get what i'm saying Every, okay let me give an exa example that might be relatable in israel in those days there was general bread that you buy and eat and there is now the bread that is taken into the holy place and is kept there amen amen it's holy bread amen and amen in fact it's not a bread that you should touch if you read your bible here the time david went into that place and ate that bread so, while every other bread can be eaten, and while every other cup can be used anyhow, the cups inside the temple, what are they? Holy cups. Why are they there? I want someone that is spiritually intelligent to tell me why the cups are there. Even in the Old Testament. Why were they there? Why are the cups in the temple? They were for service of the Lord. So, is the cup for everybody to use? It was for the service of the Lord. Now, that is the Old Testament style. Because, remember, that thing that we call the holy place, what do we, what do we call it? The temple of God. It was an Old Testament story. Who is the real temple of God? Church, who is the real temple of God? 
So when you see that Old Testament, something they call Ark of the Covenant, and they call all of those things, it was a message to say that there is a temple that is coming. This one is a type and a shadow. There is a real temple that is coming. And if we are the temple of God, hallelujah, it, and you know, remember, that temple of God that we call the Ark of the Covenant and the whole building, it was a sacred property. It wasn't like every other thing out there. That is why we always tell the saints, your life is not going to be, it's not the things that we tell you, the man in Christ, is not what we tell the man that is outside of Christ. Why? That man is not the temple of God. What we do with the one that is not the temple of God is we preach the message to him so that he can become the temple of God. So, your life is different. The service, the service, or, or the purpose of the temple in the Old Testament was the worship and service. Where does Aaron take the blood to? The temple. Everything in the temple. Where do the high priest go? The temple. What was the temple for? If you read the book of Hebrews, the service of God. So when I get born again, and I am the word, what do I, what do I become when I get born again? I am the temple of God. So I am the temple of God. I am, it's from me the service of God comes forth now. Can I get a believing amen? So we are now created to be the living. That is why you are different. You're, you are a living temple. Can I get a believing amen? Yeah. You are a living temple. Unlike the old te that temple that they had that was, that was, it was a building. You are a living temple. Holy. That's why I say, do not become, uh, okay, Romans 12 by verse 1, living sacrifice. Living is from a living temple. Living temple. Living temple. Right? Because you are different. So the world is not your standard. Because you are not like them. You are actually the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you must understand who you are. If you're looking at them and looking at the world and trying to use to evaluate your life, you've lost this idea because you are born again. Meaning you are set apart unto God. Meaning you are for the service of God. If the service of God will ever prosper on the earth, it's because you showed up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. And so you get it. That's where your life's purpose, that's where you get to start to understand what we're talking about today. Okay, being led by the Spirit. Let's go into it. Um, <laughs> all right. I want to start by saying that God, say God, has a purpose. God has a plan. And His plan is not mysterious. Please, I want you to understand how I'm going to break it down. God's plan is not actually mysterious that you don't know it. In fact, think about, okay, that might not be a good example. But if I was working in, if I get a Samsung offer letter to go and work in Samsung, what do Samsung, okay, let's break it down to phones or electronics. What, what does Samsung do? They provide what? Electronics. The aim of Samsung is to ensure that every individual that is alive uses their electronics. Do you, know, do you know that that simple plan of vision of Samsung is not hidden to the staff? You know, you don't walk into Samsung and say, what, what is your intention? What? Because it is you knowing that they want to actually ensure that everybody owns a Samsung phone, that you're on the shop floor selling it. So, the, my point is, everybody in Samsung knows why Samsung exists. It's not a mystery to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not a mystery to them. So, the generic plan for, of God on the earth cannot be a mystery to his children. If it becomes mysterious, it's a problem. How do you run with a vision or a plan that you don't know? Hallelujah. 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 Think about it. We want, we want to do something like a special uh, bridal shower for Sister Damilola now, for example. And you are now. It is part of the plan we start getting to know that everybody should come to the bridal shower in white. If you didn't know about the plan, 
You know, you might, even if you even strode into the path, you might wear blue. Hallelujah. That is why you must understand that when it comes to God's plan, it's actually not mysterious. It's there. It's clear. It is actually there and clear. And so the, that's why we're going to talk about you consecrating your life to God's plan as a new man in Christ. Hallelujah. Because God's plan will not happen anyhow. God's plan takes strategy. I mean, people are at work. You hear about strategy meetings. People at work for hours saying, no, 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 no. Like, we want to invade this particular territory with this brand new phone. How do we, what is the strategy? Who do we employ? What are the social media cues we use? So, God's got a strategy. And the thing about it is, if you don't understand God's plan and understand God's strategy, you will be in God's kingdom and it, you know, you would almost look like, it almost look like you're useless. And I'm trying to be diplomatic here. Hallelujah. You know, it's when you're planning a, a bridal shower. I don't know who planned my wife's bridal shower. Yeah, it's when you're planning a bridal shower. They say, oh, Sister Lola, you bring, ah, bring cake. Brother Olaito, you bring cups. We are planning. Yeah, why? We all know the vision. Someone's bridal shower. Someone can ask the question, why do you want me to bring cups? I didn't bring cups yesterday. It is this person's bridal. So it can't be a mystery. You can say, no, 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 no. I'm not telling you why. Just bring cup. Just bring it. No. So the v if God expects you to live your life, are you getting my point? If God is expecting to live your life because it's you he will use, you must know it and be so confident about this thing that we're talking about. What's God's plan? It's nothing, it's not mysterious, it's there. All right, let's go into it. Second Peter. Second Peter. God's plan. It's there. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. What I want us to get is there is God's plan. Then you now start understanding your part in the plan. There is God's plan. Your part in the plan. Hallelujah. God's plan and God's purpose. All right. Okay, look at Second Peter chapter 3. Look at verse 9. The Lord said, Lord. So what are we talking about here now? The Lord. What are we talking about? The Lord. Okay, I know in Second Peter. Second Peter 3, verse 9. Quickly. Second Peter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us what? Not what? Church, I want you. Not what? Willing. Are you seeing the word will there? The will of God. Not what? Willing. What is God? Not willing that any should. But that all should come to, okay, if, okay, can you, from this scripture, do you have an idea of God's, God's will? Tell me God's will from this scripture. N not willing that every man will perish, but that all will come to the knowledge of the truth. Who said it? The Lord. What is his will? That no man will perish. Hallelujah. What has he done as the chief pantocrator of this vision? He came to die. He gave his life that all men that believe on him will have this life. And when they are now born again, they are sons of God to so continually pursue this same vision. That is why, listen to it carefully. One of the greatest ways the devil operates among saints is when we are not walking in love and when we are walking in division. That's it. And I said, the greatest revival that we know till date is called the Azusa Street Revival. I mean a great move that if you got on the streets, you got on the street of Azusa in, those, in, in that year, you just get slain. It was that thick. The environment was covered by the presence of God. What's cut the revival? Division. Fighting. Bickering. People that were to run division became enemies. And so, while it looks like she didn't greet me, he didn't greet her. What is the real thing that has been targeted? That the move of God. That all, why do we have moves of God? It's back to the same thing. That not men will not perish. That they will come to the knowledge of the... I mean, if you zero it down, you bring it back to this. Everything, as long as you have become set apart unto God. You must be able to zero down all of these our activities that we do. It ends up in that people will not perish and come to the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy 
2. I'll start to read from verse 1. I exhort thee therefore that first of all supplications, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Are you seeing it there? Verse 3. For this is the good and acceptable, this is good and acceptable in the sight of the Savior. For who will, who will, give, give me a mic. Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Did you see will there again? Who will, what is the will of God? Have men what? Church, have men what? Saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. 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 So we know that when we talk about God's plan, the generic plan is that he wants all men to be saved. All men. Let me interest you. Why do you think we have the local church? Why do we have the local church? Thank you. Why do we have the local church? We have the local church so that men will be trained. In men being trained, what happens to them? They arise and they can spread the light so that all men may come to the truth. Everything. Why do we say, why do we promote the love work in the local church? In the strengthening of the brothers. Because in, the lo in your journey, you can't stand alone. When you are hit, you need people around you. Why are you hit? You are hit so that you will not do the plan. It's not really about you. Saints, are you understanding my point? It's actually not about you. It's, not, it's really not about you, victory. You're not really, really that important to the devil. I, yeah, yeah, that's the truth. It's actually, you, the devil does not care. The devil is interested in the fact that while we have God's will, how many people know that the devil too has a will? How many people know that the, the will of the devil is clear? Right? How many people know that we don't need to pray to know the will of the devil? What the will of the devil is he will do all. Why do we have demons? So that it, they are doing all their might for this same thing. That men will not know. So there is a constant battle. That's what the book of Revelation calls the battle of Armageddon. One side wants men to know. They come with what we call the sword of the spirit. To that battle. The other side with demons. And they operate through men and in the minds of men to ensure men don't know. And that's where the battle is. It's not about us. It's about really the plan. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Look at Romans chapter 8. How did God plan it? God's plan, his will, his purpose is that all will be saved. He writes it again in Romans chapter 8. The, the last part of Romans 8.28 says, Who are called according to his purpose. And I'm saying that to give it context. To purpose. Now, what is this calling and this purpose of God in Romans 8.28? Look at verse 29. For whom he did foreknow. What did he do? He did predestinate. Is... You know, people always talk about things like destiny. Predestination. God's predestination is in Christ. I'll say it again. What is God's plan? God's plan is that every one of us will be found in Christ. That is his predestination. I'll say it again. Look at it. Whom he did for no, he did predestinate. What did he do? Conform to the image of his son. So that's God's plan. Wants you and I and everybody on the streets right there to be what? Image of his son. To be like the son. How many people here are like the son already? Yeah. Glory to God. But now, so that is why when we get born again, we receive a ministry to get all that's what conform to the image of his. That's what we call the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Why do we have pastors to train people who will know the truth so that they can go out there and get people conformed to the image of his? Why do we have, when we preach the gospel, why do we demonstrate power? Like I always tell people, when you are out there, the fullness of the power of God is with you. Because when you are out there on the field, you are like a salesman. You are, you are, you are not in the realms of God. Don't disappoint me here. You are in the realms of silver or gold. It depends on who you are. Some people have silver and gold as Christians. So it depends on how you want to say that thing, right? You know, 
Well, <laughs> something happened. I was at a uh, King's Cross and Pancras got out of the tree. The brother said, ah, my leg is paining me. See the mark. Uh, you know what? Um, give me money, blah, blah, blah. I said, brother, silver and gold. I said, Pound Stalin, I have to give you. But let's get you your leg healed. I can do it. He was like, who are you? Are you a doctor? Calm down. Bring the leg. <laughs> who do you, you, you think this? <laughs> you, <laughs> he said, what you do it? You want the money? <laughs> so, yeah. And I laid hands on him. Leave him, Joe. <laughs> Hallelujah. At that level, we are demonstrator of demonstration. We are demonstrators of God's power. Why? Because we are like we are like advertising salesmen. We are the one. We, we have power. We are trying to tell another person that Jesus is alive. Are you getting my point? So all of God is like ready for you to manifest. It's not a time where you say, "Hey, God, will you do it?" You are out there. Unbeliever says he, his eyes is paining him. He cannot see. Ha! Ah, you say glory to God. At least this is the level of the supernatural opt optician. You want to see now? Not <laughs> Because what are you saying? You are actually saying that Jesus is alive. To a man that is reprobate in mind. Hallelujah. Why do we have that power show off? So that men will come to the knowledge of the... Everything that you can point everything in God to that plan. That systematic, that detailed. Everything in God. That's why we always say the power of God is not for show off. As I mean to put focus on yourself. The power of God is for the plan. Hallelujah. 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 So God, Romans 8, 29. God for whom he did for no, he did predestinate, conform to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Meaning that we will now be like Jesus Christ, the firstborn. Look at verse 30. For whom he did predestinate, them he called. How did he call us? He called us by the gospel. So he called us by the gospel. When we answered the call, what did we become? Is there justified? See, I'm justified. I'm justified. What it means you are you are you are, you are right in God's sight. It means you are in Christ. You are now like Christ. So this is the idea. Jesus Christ died, came out of the grave to produce like Christ's. To do the work of Jesus on the earth. John 14 verse 12 says, If you believe on me, meaning you become a new man in Christ, greater works, someone say greater works, greater works than this shall you do. Why? Because I go to the Father. Why did Jesus die and come out of the grave? To multiply himself in men. To continue. So, as Jesus left the earth, no. Jesus is on the earth doing his work. How is he doing his, his work? Through us. Why did Jesus come? It's still linked to that same plan. Hallelujah. So when you are born again, living a life that is not Christ-centered is like questionable. Because at the end of the day, you are actually a Christian. Think about it. Can you be in Samsung and your desire is that iPhone will do better in the ah, that's how you get fired. <laughs> you see, if you are in Samsung, the, the, the plan, the aspiration, why we go to meetings is that by the time we look at the bottom line, why do we have new phones come out? It's not because those innovators are bored, it's just if ah, what else can we use to capture brother Tosin that he will buy a new phone. So you see, brother Tosin, new his phone is working, nothing happening to it. But you have to put another thing that can maybe let him check where his wife is. Ah, I like that one. Okay, pa, 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 let's buy it. Hey, hey, they, that's why they're doing what they're doing. Why do <laughs> all of these things? Everybody's got a plan. So when God, when you're saved, you are now induct, you are now inducted into God's plan. So it's actually normal to be a Christian and live for Christ. Look at Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. You know, many people hear this scripture I'm about to quote now. And they say, huh? Paul is weird. No, Paul is the normal one. We are the weird ones. Look at Philippians chapter 1. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1. I want us to read verse 21. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. Hmm. Say, I live a Christ-centered life. 
Hey, look at verse 20. Philippians 1.20. Now, put in context that the man that is writing this is writing this from a prison. He's writing it. You know, you know people go to visit people in the prison. Even, even the writer of Hebrews says, go and visit people in the prison to encourage them and all those kind of things. Paul is in the prison. And that is why the purpose of God must be something you don't forget. And you continually consecrate yourself to that. Because it, so in the Look at this man. He is in prison, meaning he's going through a ringer. Look at what he's writing here, verse 20. According to my next expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed. Say, in nothing. In nothing. Okay, let's leave his, his English. Nothing will make me ashamed of the gospel. As well as in nothing, nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Follow it. Now, this is a man in prison that we should be saying, oh my God, oh, he's in prison. let he says, nothing's going to make me ashamed of the gospel, but with all what? Boldness as always. So now also, think about this man. He's in prison. Now also, Christ shall be what? Magnified in my? What are you supposed to say with your own life? Say in my life. With my life. Christ will be magnified. Do you know what magnified is? Magnified is expressed in a in a in an abundant measure. You know, you know what magnified is? All these IT people will know. For example, the way I'm looking right now, I'm very small. If they now take my zoom from seven, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Zoom, they take my zoom from like 30, they take it to 150. Right on the screen. I will be what? Magnified. I will cover the whole screen. You know, now the people are watching me right now, they can see some things behind me and all of that. But when our IT guru magnifies me. They won't see anything. It's only my face they will see. They won't, I will say it again so you get it. They won't see anything. It's only my face they would see. Why? The IT man or the man on the computer magnified me. Paul is saying it doesn't matter where I am. Christ is the one that will be so visible that men will see. So even when I am in prison... Christ will be visible. It will be the most expressed thing you will see. Christ, he says, even, the man is even saying, I am, I am walking on this earth so that even when I die, when you are talking about me, what will be magnified? Christ. I want you to get, this guy is saying, a life or death. You see, he's saying, I will be bold. As always, because he's trying to tell them, I am in prison. But I'm going to be bold, as always, because I've got the plan. Christ will be magnified in me. Hallelujah. Look at, you know, it says, whether it be by life or by death. As, as Paul died. No, 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 no. Uh, did you see him at the market yesterday? As Paul died, Paul is dead. Is Christ magnified in his death? What are we reading today? The book of? Philippians, who wrote it, Brother Abdul? Paul wrote it. His life, he's magnified. When we talk about Paul, we're, we're talking about the great works for Christ. Look at it. He says in verse 21, I need you to reevaluate. Why are you on the earth today? We're going to get into it because this is what we call the consecrated life. I submit myself to your plan. And we'll find ourselves in that plan. Look at verse 21. Philippians 1 verse 21, I want you to be there. What does it say? For to me, to live is, church, to live is, church, to live is, say I'm a Christian, I live a Christ-centered life, I am submitted to God's plan and God's purpose. And look at it now, look at, so for example, we are, so we said last week we're on a race. I remember, remember that we said, well, there's a race. And I remember, remember that we said, we're going to run that race with patience. Hebrews 12, verse 1. See, there's a race. We run that race with patience. I remember, remember that we said, we're going to lay aside every weight and the sin. So again, why do we not live a life of licentiousness and sin? You know, there are some things in your life now. It's not wrong, but you put it aside. It's for the purpose. Hallelujah. Even sleeping too much and eating too much can be a problem. Not knowing how to manage your time can be a problem. 
So for the for the purpose sake, for his plan's sake, I always tell my wife there is a level. I always crack the joke. I said, there's a level I will eat food. I won't hear God. You'll be shouting, die or turn left. I'll just be going, hey, HIV, but I mean, but I will just be going. I can't hear him again because <laughs> I've eaten too much. <laughs> oh dear Lord. The, the, there, okay. Just preach. Amen and amen. There, there, there is a level of alcohol I would take. I'm supposed to preach to Sister Lola. Say, hey! Okay, okay, just pray the gospel. When we talk about sin, it's a weight as it relates to his plan. It's not because I, you see now God is angry with you, like you know, it's because it af sin affects you, hardens our hearts to the plan. It goes, it can it gets to a point. Have you heard of former spiritual men? No, no, no. Have you have you seen those ones before? like when you were in uni or when you were somewhere? The man, and that's why, and these things don't just happen. You don't just wake up and just say, where's God? Or, I don't know where God used to be. It's actually a system. You just, uh, uh, why are we praying? I'm not praying today. I'm not really going for Bible study, really. You know what? You know, you know what? You have logical reasons. One day, because the idea is your heart keeps getting hardened. Hardened. And now you cannot, I'm able to realize that when you do wrong for so long, you know, how many people have noticed this? When you do wrong once, you, have, you, be, you feel, how many people know that you feel bad? You feel, ah, I shouldn't have done this. Your conscience, your sense of right and wrong will say, ah, we shouldn't have done that. You, you did it again. You feel bad. But the, for, forgive my English, but the bad that you felt is not as difficult or hard as the bad of the first one. Hey, see, I'm trying to communicate this message. God help me. All trans. Then you now do it again. That's the third bad. You feel bad, oh. But it's not like the second one. Huh? Something's happening to your heart. A time will come like bad number 64. You will, not even, you will not know that you have done bad. It's just like when you, are, you live in a house where they're always frying fish. The first day you enter, God, wait, Sister Sarah, wow, what fish is that? You say, ah, no, 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 it's Uzbekistan shark. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Then she, you come in, are you, are you still frying this fish? Say, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it comes to a point when you enter the house, day 80, she's frying the fish. You, you didn't smell it. Because you are, your nose is used to the Kistan frying of the shark. You, know, you cannot smell it anymore. Another person will come in and say, yeah, what are they frying here? You say, who is frying something? Is anybody, ah, the nose is gone. It's used to it. Hallelujah. I remember when we first got back to the, um, London. Myself and my wife were, were up north before. When we were going to our family, uh, our, our, um, our sister-in-law's place, there is a place in Thamesmead. When we pass there, there is a particular smell. You, we, when I, we first got back, while we are driving, we might be talking about, oh my God, since we're blessed today, every time we get there, ah, ah! What kind of smell? What, what killed you here? What's happening? Do you know I realized that after we have passed there for one year, we just passed the place. What has happened? We have damaged our nose. Our nose cannot perceive God. And, oh, sorry. It cannot perceive the smell anymore. That, I'm telling you how, what sin does. It, it's not just a big deal. The same you that reacted like, ah! So now, you know, carry someone in the car. Is some, what happened? Did somebody just pass wind? Is it, ah? You can smell something. I can't smell anything. Oh, his, his nose is gone. Why? Because it's hardened now. Because it's used to that thing. That's why it says wait and sin is a weight. It's not because maybe God is. No. In perceiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we said we're going to run the race with patience. He says we're going to, we're going to lay aside every sin and the sin that easily besets us. He says we're going to look unto Jesus. The altar and finisher of our faith, who for the joy of what was set before him. What made Jesus stay on the cross? That plan. It's still that same plan. What did Jesus say? What did Hebrews say in verse 3 of Hebrews? He said, and verse 4, he says, if you do not um, um, focus on Jesus and watch how he embraced all he went through. Looking ahead, he says, you will be wary in your minds. Why did Jesus stay on the cross? We'll look at the story of Jesus now. So you don't think that maybe, like I always crack the joke. You know, people think, is God in the flesh? 
and then you now stab him. You say, ah, ah. Pilate's PA. You just stab me. Ah, that's blood and water. Oh. No. It was, we are going to see the agony of the man Christ. We're going to look at it now. The agony of the man Christ. You know, because in walking in God's plan, and you know, because we're going to talk about God's plan. We're talking about God's plan. We're going to talk about your part in this thing. Right? Sometimes it will be difficult. Let me just say it here. No man has ever, even Jesus, fulfilled God's plan and God's purpose without being a person of prayer and the word. I want you to write it down. See, it will never change. It won't change. Hmm. We also said last week, the things that help us on our journey. We said number one, faithfulness. We said number two, obedience. We said number three, don't compare. Don't compete. We said collaborate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so please understand that when it comes to God's will, it's actually quite important. It's quite important that somebody in his local church spent time praying about it. Colossians 4. Colossians 4. Let's go quickly. Let's take some speed now. Colossians 4. Let's look at verse 12. God's plan and his purpose and the direction and the part you play can never come to pass. Except men give themselves to prayer. Look at verse 12. Are we there? Colossians 4.12. Ephras, who is what? One of you. Who is he? A servant of Christ. So, Ephras was the pastor of the Colossae church. Okay, see, Pastor Daya, it's not true. Colossians chapter 1. See Colossians chapter 1. Let's look at verse 7. As he also learned of Ephras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Who is for you? Hallelujah. So the Colossians have a pastor. The church, yeah. All right. Look at verse 12. Col um, that's Colossians 4 12. Now we're back. Ephras, who is one of you, the servant of Christ, saluted you. Always what? Church, always what? Verse 12. Laboring. See, it must be important. Laboring fervently. You know, you know, he didn't say he labored once. He continually labored. That is why there is a ministry of prayer to the people that are preached to. See, what we are preaching is scandalous. Imagine yourself being, and I, I was once not saved. So when I hear he died, he came out of the grave for my sins, I'll be asking him who sent him. Like, I don't get what sins. What are you really talking about? I, I maybe we have met, they, not, nothing wrong with them. They are just people that were just born and they're just normal people. So they are, you are telling them that all have sinned. I, I, what are you talking who, who drives the morality around what is sin and what's not sin? What are you, are you have you met those innocently ignorant people like that? They're, what are you saying that he died and came out of the grave for my sins? Sir, what are you saying? You know, that's why we always tell people that the gospel is scandalous. You being here is a miracle. It means Sarah actually believed she, be, she was not born again and somebody must have told her that God died for her and came out of the grave and, and, then, she now, and then she now says, I believe I receive. That's scandalous. That doesn't make sense. Paul even said it. It is foolishness to the Greek. Foolishness. But unto us, to us, we know it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1.20. To us, but to them it is foolishness. Hallelujah. To the Greek, a stumbling of foolishness. But to us, so this gospel, this one that we're talking about, eternal life, I remember it, all these messages, somebody must be there praying. Hallelujah. That's why a, a church that is not praying, they ain't going nowhere. They will just be having fanciful things, entertainment, tales by moonlight, drama night, uh, you know, variety night, best dancer. You know, <laughs> you know, see, all of those things have their place. But in the purpose and plan of God that men will know the truth. Ah, somebody must be praying. Say I live for the plan and purpose of God. Yeah. Laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect. Tell you this. Complete. Okay, he puts it there. Perfect. I mean complete in all the will of God. So somebody was praying for the church in Colossae. 
If you look at the church in Colossae, after they heard the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, after they heard the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, people that came in and started talking about the message of angels. Saying, saying ah, I, saw, I entered into some deep realms where which I saw angels. Angels are now saying this and that. Read the book of Colossians. But Ephraim was somewhere praying that uh, that thing that we heard, that message of the gospel, the simplicity of that message, that these guys, these guys, is that, why do we have the letter, the Galatian letter? Oh, you foolish Galatians. They heard the, some things that, no, 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 I've heard the message. I can't go back. Oh. See, who has bewitched you? Who was it told in front of you that we're doing type and shadow? What's it on in front of you that we're saying Christ was crucified? What is this one now that you're saying that you want to circumcise to be born, to be saved? Because new men had entered and they've twisted scripture like DJs. Right? Man is a function of what he hears. So be careful where you put your ear. Don't say, no, no, not me. The level I've got, got to now. Uh, the level I've got to now. I can eat anything. No. Man is a, you have a mind. It's loyal to the information that you give it. So you got to be careful where you put your ears. Because it happened to the church in Galatia. Who the, Paul was the one. You know, I'm people know that this is not Paul here. You know, I'm taking my writings and my reading from Paul. Now, Paul himself stood in front of the Galatian church. Imagine that. Teaching them, a man that knew the Torah. He taught them, you love, to, uh, Paul, uh, Paul is your teacher. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't need to hear the word of God again. Paul left the place, came back. You know what people were now doing? They were doing ablution. You don't know what ablution is. Okay. What were they doing? They were doing things like circumcision. You will, you will lose. You will, you will not enter heaven. You will not do this one. Angel is Jesus. In the, ch <laughs> in the church, they went back to legalism. Ah, you're not doing anything on the Sabbath day. Paul got to a point in wrote, Ubi, this one is witchcraft. Because what you hear actually matters. It's not like I heard it. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, do you know when I, I entered Greece? I entered Greece in 1994. Um, when, you know, when, when, when God appeared to Joseph Prince and told him. That was since I stayed here. But now, you know, I'm another, I have another level. No. Before you know it, you start adding it. You start diluting the message. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what, what, how do we get here? We got here by saying somebody took their time to pray for the church in Colossae. Their pastor was praying for them. That they were walking. So walking in the will and plan and purpose of God. And keeping your eyes on the ball is a prayer matter. It's not something that, okay, because you have been told. It's a prayer matter. Hallelujah. It's a prayer matter. <laughs> Paul got to a point. He said, ah, oh, my very children. <laughs> in whom I do what? I travel. In I remember I've given back to children here before. Okay, yeah, Mojan is fresh. Vandross was there. It, you know, Mojan didn't, just, Mojan didn't just go into the, you know, delivery room and said, Vandross, I'm coming, oh. Yeah? Are you taking a selfie? No! You know, as according to what Mojan, my darling Mojan told me, oh, yeah! I was coming at his baby, oh. Traveling in child bath. So you see Paul praying. He's praying for the Galatian church. Ah, what did he do? He prayed the gospel to them. So in the preaching of the gospel to them, he's leaving them. He has to pray. He has to pray. This thing he's saying, my brothers and sisters, if you are ever going to pray the word of God, you're a man of prayer. This thing that we are preaching is scandalous. He has to pray. He said, until, and he calls it, imagine somebody is trying to, he's talking about men understanding the gospel and he's talking about traveling traveling comparing it to childbirth yeah. he says and i'm going to stay there hallelujah i'm is it, I, I, i'm going to stay like my, my, uh, my daughter madeline was talking to me like you know <laughs> we're expecting the baby at a particular point in time and so um what happened i was just with my wife on the on the, in the parlor, and we we're just talking, and the spirit just said, "Start praying now." Ah, uh -uh. she was talking to me. That very same hour, the lady was at the labor room pushing, and then she said, "All her strength had gone." I mean, the very same hour, all her strength had gone, and so the doctor said to her that if you don't push now, this child is going to suffocate. 
But she was saying, like, I, can't, I can't do anything anymore. The husband was begging, this child is dying. I can't do anything. I was in London here, or wherever I was, with my wife, Justin. All of a sudden, it's, bah! And then strangers strange just comes to her. I didn't, see, I didn't even know that she was going through that. I just knew that it is time now to pray for this one. And then, boom. The child was to die, and now the child was saved. The point is, the things that pertains to life on this earth has to do with prayer. My point. Understand it. So in your walk, sometimes God will nudge you to pray. Some of the things we see as tragedies, maybe people didn't pray. Maybe we're too busy not to pray. Maybe, you see, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get, I'm just trying to tell you that there is a supply that is needed from the saints as it relates to the plan of God. And you almost understand it and take that place. Ephras, one of you, laboring fervently for you, that you will stand. Meaning the success of your life actually is up to your praying and the prayers of others. I'll say it again. The success of your life in following God's plan and purpose is actually around your praying and the prayers of others. That's why a local church where they pray for one another, the tendency that men will walk in God's plan is higher. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Hey, church, hallelujah. Let's look at Jesus. Jesus himself. Look at Matthew 26. We're consecrating ourselves to his plan. <laughs> See how Jesus, Jesus' prayer here shows us an idea of consecration. Look at verse 36. We start so that we, we can start to round off here because of our time. Matthew 26. Look at verse 36. Then come Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And he said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be, are you in verse 37? He began to be what? And what? So, so talking, he began to be what? Who was sorrowful and heavy? Now, if you wanted to put it in the terms that we use, the lingual today, will you not almost say depressed? Will you, you know, I mean, people know what sorrow is. Heaviness. Now, this man is about to go and die. The man Jesus is going to die. He is in a place where which his flesh, what does he do? He takes two people. And go and pray. You know what saints do when they are going, getting into trouble? They go into isolation. They don't talk to anybody. They don't tell anybody about anything. They say, I want to deal with it on my own. No. What did, Je who, what did Jesus do? Say Jesus. What did Jesus do? Jesus took his 12 disciples. He said, some of you stay here. You know, there's a way you see Jesus Christ groaning in prayer. And he's your mentor. And you be like, ha. And you are not grown. Like, ah, uh ah. -uh. Something is like something's about to happen. <laughs> Imagine we we go somewhere. We go somewhere now. My cerebral light, like all of us were going. And someone stands in front of us with a gun. And as he stands in front of us with a gun, I run. How many people know that brother light don't follow me? <laughs> all right. Even before I run, he might be in front. You know, but that's not that's the one. But the point is, imagine I stood, eh? You go through me first. But I don't know what might be my wife saying, yeah, ah, shoot him first. Yeah, ah, no, nothing. You, like, you know, like, now, so imagine you are, imagine you are in a place. You've seen this man, you call him rabbi. He's taught you wisdom. You don't start seeing him seemingly wanting to cry. Matthew is there writing. He said he's, the man is praying. It's like he's crying. He's sweating. It's like blood. You know what I'm saying? Ah, hey, hey, what's happening? Why is he praying and then blood is coming out? Why is he crying? Ah, if our mentor is crying, should we not be weeping? You know, so he says, you stay here. But he is, he is in a moment, in the will of God. It's not comfortable. But what does this man do? He goes to pray. What do you do when you're the most vulnerable? You pray. I'll say it again. You pray. 
you get others to pray. See, that you are vulnerable and that you are in a weak place does not mean that you are not a believer. It means that you are just a human being going through a phase. Amen. You know, people like this. Thing. Call a brother. Ah, it's gotten this deep now. Because I know <laughs> if people don't pray, I might give up on this. I might not go in this direction again. I know God wants me to go into that, but it's difficult. What do I do? No. I give myself to prayer. Our mentor, what does he do? He gives himself to prayer. It was difficult. Ah! Heaviness! Sorrow! We're not saying you should not cry. As we are crying, let the tongues be coming out. Can we get a believing Amen when you are going through trials don't make the mistake of running away get your guys jesus did not say ah, ah, no 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 now this is too heavy for me no 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 he didn't complain he, didn't murmur. he got into prayer because he knows that in praying he established to go to go further so that you will realize that jesus has gone through some of the motions in your life you have gone through they record his words for us let's look at it what did Jesus say in verse 38 he tells them See, let me tell you, stop playing champion up and down. What did Jesus tell his mentees? My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Ah, even unto death. What then does he say? Pray with me. Hallelujah. He said, pray with me. There is nobody that is a singular champion. Jesus said, see, I... I am going through this thing right there. Guys, let's rise and pray. <laughs> Let us rise and pray. He said, this is what we do. And Jesus has given us an example. What we do when we go through a ringer. What did he say? Watch with me. Look at the next verse. He went a little further. Meaning he told them pray. He went a little further. And fell on his knees and prayed. This is the prayer of consecration. What did he say? Oh my father. <laughs> Say, my father, my father. <laughs> hey, say, my father, my father. Look at, what, look, look at Jesus here. This one is prayer of consecration. It's not even actually prayer of, of faith. Glory to God, I'm not feeling anything. Ah, no, brother. It's not, this is not the prayer of faith time. It's consecration time. Where which your emotions are ringing. Ah, the uh, barbecue. The, uh, suya, uh, you will die now. Look at what Jesus is saying. Oh, my father, if it be possible, they show us the humanity of that man. If it be possible, let this cup pass. The humanity of that man, let this cup pass from me. Where did everything change? Nevertheless. Hey, the prayer of consecration. Because in your journey, in your walk, there will be instructions given to you. There will be things told you. There will be specifics told you. Nevertheless. Look at Philip, a man that was actually in the midst of a revival in Acts chapter 8. Enjoying the revival. People getting saved. People getting healed. Blind being healed. And the Bible says, leave the, 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 the Spirit of the Lord goes to him and says, leave those people. Leave a whole revival. And go towards the desert. Say the desert. No one is there. It will look like a failure. He has to, Philip has to leave a whole revival to go towards a desert because God wanted to meet one man. Do you know the name of the man? The utopian Enoch. You know, sometimes even in life, in your walk, God tells you, change direction. In changing direction, everybody thinks you're a failure. What keeps you? Prayer. What keeps you? Prayer. What does Jesus say here? Let this cup pass over me. Nevertheless, not as I will. But as thy will. The prayer of consecration, is this something you pray once? No. You pray it from time to time, actually. Jesus does not pray it once. He goes again to check the people that should be praying with him. They don't pray. He comes back. He tells them something. Verse 40. Why are you asleep? Can you not watch with me for one hour? He said, guys, this is the reason why we are praying. Look at verse 40. Watch and, verse 41, watch and pray that ye that ye enter not into, that ye enter not into, what is that temptation you enter? That decision to walk away from God's direction in God's plan. 
Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Let this cup pass over me. The, okay, let's go. He now says, the spirit indeed is. How many people know your, the spirit within you wants to follow God's direction? Because that's God within you. So why do we pray? We pray because of our minds. We pray be, because of our composition. It's called temptation. All right, look at it there. It says, why you couldn't watch me? Okay, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. He went again. Someone say again. Verse 42. The second time and pray, oh father, if this cup may not pass from me, except I drink it, let thy will be done. Consecrating himself to God's plan. So the point is this. Even as we close in this service, you, I want you to understand that while God has the plan, like I've told you, you would have from time to time the part you should play. Some of them will be favorable. <laughs> like for example, God wants Paul to preach a message to the governor Felix. There is a storm in the way on the, on, 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 on the way to the governor Felix. There was going to be a destruction. Paul was saved. Why was Paul saved? So that he can go and preach there. Paul and Silas in Acts 16. God told them go. To this particular place. They got there in the evening. They started to preach. Before they knew it, they were in jail. Paul and Silas were in jail. So sometimes the will of God gets us in uncomfortable positions. And sometimes the will of God gets us into beautiful positions. My point is, it's not about beautiful or not beautiful positions. It's about the fact that we followed him. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. It's just the fact that we did. So the man that will walk in God's plan. Because we're talking about God's plan and your paths. So there'll be things that God will instruct you to do. We'll get into all of this thing. We made we can all of that. There are things that God from time to time will instruct you to do. It's all part of the global plan. Hallelujah. Some of them will be difficult. Some of them will not be difficult. Some of them will take, and all of this will take obedience. It will take faithfulness. So say, Pastor, what, I, what, what do I do? Well, what's the last thing God told you to do? Why, how do I know the last thing God told me to do in the generic? Get into the written word of God. As you read the word in Romans 12, the Bible tells us in verse 1 and 2 that you may know. So the first level of knowing God's plan or God's will or God's way is renewing your mind. As we renew our minds, we start to see that picking God's direction, picking, because how many people know that God leads in the today? He tells you there is direction. How many people have been ever directed by God to do something before? Talk to me. Have you ever been directed by God to do something before? Hallelujah. Yeah. How many people have ever been directed by God to do something you did not want to do? Yeah. I hope you're not marrying me, sure. But yeah. <laughs> you didn't want to do it. How will you go through that phase? Is what I'm telling you now. We give ourselves to prayer. Do you know why we pray long as it relates to consecration? So, you know, we can actually get our motives. Why do we spend time in prayer? As it relates to actually gleaning God's direction. How many people know that naturally as a human being you have desires? How many people know that you have desires? You, as a human being, just being a human being, you are born. Ah, you just desire the wig. I saw it on Sister Dami's. I'm not being covetous, but it's fine on Sister Dami's hair. So I want to wear it. You know, it's a desire. So by being a human being, you have desires. And there is now the leading and the direction of God in particular things. So we stay in prayer. We stay long so that our desires and our motives can be trashed so that we are able to glean so simply what God will have us do. When people call you to pray long, they don't hate you. One of the things you do for you is that it just clarifies, it puts to bed. You know, I'm people know how we live in a noisy world. Sometimes it takes a while for you to get quiet. That's why we tell the saints, give time to praying in tongues. A lot. Give time to it. Enjoy it. Enjoy that. He says, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14. When I pray in the spirit, ah, 
my spirit prays. What else do you need to know? My spirit prays. So praying in tongues makes you sensitive. Develop a prayer life that has a routine. Let me help you. Have a routine. If you need to set an alarm, set the alarm. Start there. Five to six in the evening I will pray. To set it and keep to it. Because the things as it relates to the spirit, the flesh does not want it. So you would have to be disciplined. And sometimes you fail at it. But go back to that plan again. Go back actually to those routines. Because when you set your life with a spiritual routine, it guards you. It helps you. Hallelujah. I'm not threatening you. I'm just telling you. Many, many Christians fall by the wayside. Not because they are bad people. But because there is no fortification in the place of prayer sometimes. Hallelujah. Because the, see, the will of God is why you're here. The plan of God. And there is the path that you play. You get to know the path that you play first. By the living word of God in the renewing of your mind so feast on the epistles read it a lot renew your mind whatever it says you have you have whatever it says you can do you can do practice it give yourself to it the Bible says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to it read the word you have many opportunities to read the audio Bible this one Bible this one that put a framework that makes your heart more sensitive so that you just hear some, some people just can know what to do and you say wow 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 it's like god likes that person but i mean no it is the level of sensitivity amen amen hallelujah plan these things out feed on the truth feed on messages you are you are helping your sensitivity it's not that tv is bad it's just like too much of it gets you in another direction in your heart guard your heart with all diligence out of it the issues of life my son attend to my words incline thy ears to my sins oh meditate on these things give yourself wholly to it that your prophet may appear to all the secrets is there in the scriptures hold on to it and we walk in the plan and purpose of god say i live a christ-centered life Rise upon your feet this evening. Amen. But a victory you can play. I live a Christ-centered life. Lift up your hands. Now, this, is, this meeting is a meeting where we're just consecrating ourselves. Come on, saints. Hey, like, I want you to have that moment. This is another time where we're just saying, Lord, I'm open to your leading. Some are just afraid if I, if, I, if I surrender to the Lord. That's why I said he gave us the song already so you can play the game. They're saying if I surrender to the Holy Ghost, maybe, 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 no. Hi. Maybe if I surrender to the Holy Ghost, what will it? That's the best you can ever be. I surrender to your plan. Come on, sing as we, as we pray in this service. So as he's singing, you're Holy praying. Ghost, you're praying, saints. My life belongs to you. Surrender. Ha <laughs> I surrender my life to you. I want you to open up your mouth. This is not just us closing. You are actually talking Holy to the Lord. Ghost, you are talking to the Lord. You are saying in my generation, you. your name will be heard because I came. I surrender. Ah, Lord. Lord. In my generation. You. Ah. Hey. I'm now knowing that I'm set apart unto you. Life belongs to you, Lord. I surrender. You know, you you receive his life, then you are the one that now gives your life to him. That life that he has given to you. Submission to his service. That in your generation, that in your journey, that at the end you'll be able to say something. I fought the good fight of faith. I have finished this race. Paul said in Acts 20 verse 24, Nothing moves me. Nothing else moves me. I don't count my life dear at all. But to walk and finish the race 
which is to preach the grace of God. That's what he said. Say, this might be the beginning of a life for somebody in this meeting. This might be the beginning of living for somebody. Hey. It's a service of concentration. It's a service of concentration. My life is for you, Jesus. I'm walking in your will and plan. Oh, not all of my will. None of all just what I want to do in my life. It's what do you want? How would you want me to walk? Oh, I glean your purpose. For as your sheep, I hear your voice. Oh, hey. I hope you are seeing that you are like a member of the body of Christ. Every part is important. Ah, you will play your part in your generation. Oh, someone might be the hand, someone might be the legs, someone might be the ear, but you will play your part. You will play your part in this strategy of God. You will play your part. You will give it a chance. Oh, you will press on. That's what Paul calls it. He said, We press on, forgetting those things that are behind. Oh, forgetting those things that are behind. I lay hold. I lay hold. I go on. Hey. You might have come into this area and say, Oh, I'm walking away. I'm doing as I please. This service is for you. There is God's will. There is God's plan, saints. There is the way you have you work. For some, it's just to open up your heart to Him again. Some have been hurt. You've been hurt by things. You've been hurt by spirituals, one way or the other. You've been you you've been disappointed. You say, you know, that's it. I'm closing the door. You may be watching me right there. I'm closing the door on anything God or anything church or anything of these things. God's got a plan, brother. In the end, it will be worth it. Sister, in the end, it will be worth it. Oh, it will be. It will be. Serving God in your generation. It will be worth it eternally. On that glorious day. Oh, we give you praise. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Oh, thank you. We walk in your will. Let's say this as a church. We walk in your will. We walk in your plan. We see. We know. We comprehend. And we walk. In Jesus' name. And we say. Come on. And we say. Come on. Shout. Hallelujah.